Welcome to the Archaeology Studio. Today's episode looks at the famous Balawat Gates of ancient Assyria. By the end of this episode, you will be prepared to describe the physical characteristics and the artistic expressions at the Balawat Gates. Furthermore, you can consider the possibilities of studying the larger social contexts. Balawat was a settlement in Mesopotamia, the land between the rivers of the Tigris and the Euphrates. Balawat was situated about 10 kilometers from the large city of Kauhu or Nimrud that was the capital city of many Assyrian kings, including Ashurnasirpal II, who was credited with founding the settlement at Balawat. His son, Shalmaneser III, continued as the next king, adding more monumental constructions. In the long line of Assyrian kings, Ashurnasirpal II ruled from 883 through 859 BC, and then Shalmaneser III ruled from 858 through 824 BC. This period was within the Iron Age of the region, and it was part of the historical Neo-Assyrian Kingdom. Many large gates or doorways have been found at Balawat, but three constructions in particular have been most impressive in their size, artistic elements, and preservation at the site. Two of those gates were attributed to Balawat's founder, King Ashurnasirpal II, and another one gate was attributed to his son and successor, King Shalmaneser III. The Gate of Shalmaneser III has been reconstructed as part of the public exhibit at the British Museum in London. The actual surviving material was limited to the bronze bands and fittings of the gate but the larger reconstruction was possible with attention to the excavation context, associated cuneiform inscriptions, and awareness of the remnants of other gates. The gates were made mostly of wood, with horizontal bands and fittings made of bronze. The wood itself had disintegrated long ago, but cuneiform inscriptions mentioned cedar wood as the raw material. The horizontal bronze bands were made in eight rows. They were decorated with scenes honoring either King Ashurnasirpal II or Shalmaneser III. These three most famous gates of Balawat were about 6.8 meters in height more than three times the height of an average adult. The edge-framing wood pillars possibly were tree trunks, and their bases could rotate inside the stone sockets in the ground. Most of the bronze pieces have become decayed and fragmented, as seen in the remnants of the palace gate of Ashurnasirpal II. These fragments show scenes of war, captives, and tribute bearers. Another part depicts the king and his companions hunting lions and wild cattle. The best preserved bronze pieces were from the palace gate of Shalmaneser III. The preservation was instrumental for reconstructing the gate, as seen at the British Museum. The decorations here convey the story of Shalmaneser III's expedition to find the source of the Tigris River in 853 BC. The river was traced upstream into a long cave, sometimes called the Tigris Tunnel. 
until this event in Assyrian history, the Tigris was regarded as a living deity and not necessarily following the laws of nature like other rivers. The gates of Balawat were installed at the entrances of major buildings in public view. People could see the grandeur of these gates or doorways, consistent with the monumental constructions of the palace and of the temple of Mamu. The bronze bands and fittings served technical functions of holding the wood pieces in unison and strengthening the overall construction of the gates. But moreover, they presented surfaces that could be decorated extensively. The specific decorations here depicted the achievements of the kings, similar to the stone reliefs and other artworks that essentially materialized the power and authority of the kings into durable monuments. The Balawat gates can be appreciated for their technical and artistic qualities, yet they comprised only a few of the constructions at Balawat as a whole. Moreover, Balawat was only one settlement in a much larger Assyrian kingdom. In concluding this episode, now you should be familiar with the Balawat gates of ancient Assyria. You can describe the physical characteristics and artistic expressions, and you can consider how to study the larger social contexts. Please remember to subscribe to this channel and never miss another episode of the Archaeology Studio.